I didn't, that's something I don't know about. But wait, Floyd? That happened to Floyd? I, I'm, I need to know about that. Wait, what happened? Wait, so I'm going to do my research, but Floyd, they try to get Floyd with the Man Act? That's insanity. That's insanity. Oh, yeah, and by the way, of course, y'all should know that. This ain't got nothing to do with no color. Like, I keep telling y'all, and people try to make the Man Act be, this is against, um, they just don't want um, white and black people to be together. No, that has nothing. They, they didn't want Jack, they didn't want Jack Johnson to date his or have his his so called white on woman, but the Man Act is to stop. It's a real thing. So they really tried to stop or minimize. They didn't. They, the Man Act really was for the mafia. To be honest, if we really want to think about it, that's who really was able to control the market. The mafia was directly on this uh, unbelievable amount of historical data we have to prove that the mafia was working with law enforcement. It's it's just ridiculous for me to even try to say that. But the only catch is people don't like to understand that because now that times is different. All we know is the mafia movies and we see that the FBI and the agents and the, the NYPD and LIPD, they set up all these mafia in Chicago. They set up all these people and they got them um, already killed or in jail. But no, 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 no. You ain't going to race her history like that. They was directly working with each other. And so much so that when you think about the man act and having, if you have... We could say it if you have illegal prostitution that has been legalized by the underground underworld market or the underground created a bubble where there's a protection here and somebody pays a tax to people in law said law enforcement agencies. And this said tax is more money than a law enforcement agent makes all year. And this said tax is a tax that they get taxed every month. They are going to clearly be corrupted. These are not people who was making the biggest bucks as as whatever agent or if you have a bunch of warriors and a bunch of soldiers they are the ones who's getting paid the least the officers in command are getting paid the most and even if those officers in command ain't getting paid enough they'll even be able to be flipped so the man act for y'all don't who understand how this will work for people who's working in the underground work market if i can stop everybody in new york from keeping their Whatever rings that they got with the peas, if they keep them in check and they can't travel now, you're not gonna be able to travel the way I'm about to travel. I could about to, I could do a tour now. I got a whole bubble cover me underground. I got a whole market of people who protecting me. So now they can go do all type of thing, and their trafficking ring goes to a whole nother level with that stuff. That's how these things work. And that's why when we say that the underground, sometimes the prisons, the prisons have some of these people. It's not that they're, it's, it, for those who don't understand this completely, it's not that the prisons have the most genius minds. Yeah, we got some MacGyvers who can do all type of stuff in jails and make all type of, oh, y'all already know. I, some of the best pictures I've ever seen in my life, I thought it was from Picasso, came from inmates in jail who were sending prison things back home. Whatever, I'm going to leave that at that, at that. I seen some of the most, um, I still got the visions. And shout out to everybody who kept their, who kept their, um, their porches, their happy day birthday cards and stuff from artists who didn't have regular pen pay, didn't have canvas. They, the canvas was made out of all type of cardboard that was glued and it was phenomenal. So shout out to all the MacGyvers. But if we can't be, we got to be honest. The MacGyvers were in the streets and had ties and ended up in jail and they kept their power in jail. That's why the power still stays in jails for the most part. And most people who own and run these organizations end up, if they're not dead, they're in jail. So that's the real reason why the jails run everything. And the jails are running some heinous things if you think about it. I don't have, shout out to everybody, like I said, if you're doing things righteously, but the amount of innocent victims that are getting abused in these jails, the sister that just got, they, somebody was, it happened to a sister and a brother. Somebody went in there, we're going to talk about schizophrenia because that has something to do with Chris Dorner today. This guy is schizophrenic. He goes into... I don't want to say the real the jail name. He goes into a local jail. There's an actual case about this right now, so I'm it's it's, op it's really going on, and I don't want I definitely want to say something that's going to affect the family because I'm gonna speak real about this. So, this guy is schizophrenic. They the officers who arrested him, they he's doing stuff. They viewed him as throwing up gang signs. Now let me say something too. 
they are trying to say that he's in a neighborhood that have gangs in it. What neighborhood in our inner cities do not have a gang in it? Now, now, I'm not even talking about a major gang. What na what, so you can say that about anywhere, anybody who lives anywhere, even in a lot of suburban places and, and rural areas. Anyway, back to the story. He goes, they put him into a gang unit. Somebody who should have been in some, met somebody who was falsely arrested as well, by the way. He was arrested because they had he had a warrant out for his arrest. And they say the claim is that he missed the court case. And that's why he had the warrant. But there's also evidence that he didn't get the, uh, the idea that he had to go to court. And this is somebody who has multiple disabilities. The schizophrenic is the main one that we focusing on, though. Because he his reaction, if y'all know schizophrenic, they'll 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 react, they'll just snap out of character. That's some levels and some degrees of it, right? So now they put him in a gang unit. This gang unit is these are all young people. I forgot to tell y'all that. These are all people under 18. This gang unit thinks that he's throwing up whatever, maybe, I don't know. They think he's doing something. I can't. We you, Oh, you have Kim. We can see the CCTV image, but you can't hear what's being said. All we can see is about six or seven of them are just wailing, like fighting like it's Sparta. Like they are trying to they're trying to defend Rome and they uh, they must. This is for Sparta, that type of fighting. They are wilding on this boy. I, it, it's like what what type of energy are y'all doing for one person? One person should have been able to do that if, if he had a real problem, if y'all had a problem with him. But obviously, these kids, they got their own issues. If you're doing that to somebody like that, just for, I don't care what he did or said, you kill, you wallow on him like that, that's different. But they took it to the next level. He stomped out on the floor, bleeding, and he's like trying to move and trying to survive. There's officers that's on camera just walking by, looking and walking away. This thing lasted for two minutes. They beat this guy bloody for two minutes. But what happens at the end? Where's the cherry on top of this insanity? This is why I can't say nothing. There's a case going on right now. After the officer walks away. Be oh, yeah. No. When the officer walks, at first, the guy stop. And then the last person sees the officer and he's throwing another kick. And then he walks away towards the group. When they get to the group, they see the officer he walking. One of the guys walk past the guy, get some type of thing. You can't see it because it's all blurry, but it's a microwave. We know it's a microwave. Takes the microwave, throws the microwave on this guy's head, and he's right now in a medically induced coma. Let me explain one time before I read the chat. A medically induced coma means they had to put him in a coma to, to make him survive because of all the stuff that they have to do to him. The court cases that's about to come for that family. This will we don't need to talk. Y'all can look this up. The, um, if they play this right, they need to serve some serious justice. And like I said, the prisons are ran right now by a lot of unrighteous savages. And because a lot of us are from the streets, we want to acknowledge that. Yeah, you and just because you in jail, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. And there's a lot of great, good people who are innocent in there. We know that. We are not talking about them. The savagery that's in there is a problem. That needs some re real rehabilitation. And for anybody, if that was somebody who was a shot caller who said that guy deserved that, whoo, you deserve some serious justice. Let me see what y'all talking about, though. We're going to get to the um thing, though. Um, The 16 letter. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm, I'm catching what you're saying right now. I, at first, I'm like, whoa. You like, I didn't like, oh, maybe I didn't read who it was. I thought you was talking about Adam 22 <laughs> when they say Adam 16. That's why I'm like, wait, are you playing around? You joking around? That's hilarious. I thought you, I was, I swear you was going towards like the slap, the sharp um, concept. Let's see who are the 10 percenters, the rich, the slave, man, is the fuck, the poor who teach the poor lies to believe the almighty, true and living God is, oh yeah, you going in right now. Cardi TV is cooking. Otherwise known as the blood suckers of the poor, right? Those the ten percenters. Those the ten percenters are the and, and the unknown as well. Be or the ones who are seek to be unknown. The ones who are spoken to be. You're not supposed to talk about them. And 
the, these these wicked these these people who savage and harp their feast off of the poor they reign over the poor they reign over the righteous right poor righteous souls they are also people who are now teachers people who are judges people who are lawyers and people who are even cops let's finish up our introduction before we start going into the poll and we get into our votes chris daughter now I'm going to, right now, because I said so much about him, let me reverse, and I'm going to give y'all the conclusion, and I'm going to fill anybody in on the blanks. Right now, today, the news is Chris Dorner has a, his gun that he owned has been used by a group or a gang of so-called Latin, um, they're trying to, in my eyes, I think they're trying to say that they're migrants. But Latin descent, they from Latin descent. That's all they we really get in their, their background. They just got pictures and that's what they said. So I guess I don't know what they know about these guys. Here's the purpose and point of this. Chris Dorner was supposedly unalive in 2013. So if February 2013, he's gone. Somebody who worked for the LAPD, somebody who was who was in working, he 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 was a, um served in the Navy, somebody who we about to talk about, he had an intense case about the LAPD. His gun that he was in a house for, and he created a manifesto. There was a so-called manhunt for him. He had a house full of these guns that we know of. He spoke about them. Anderson Cooper allegedly said he sent him the video where he shot up a, a coin from 100 yards away. He had sniper guns. He had sniper rifles. He had all these ammunitions. And he burnt down and burnt his whole house down. You're telling us now that some way, somehow, migrants who came from outside of this country, they came into California... They came into California and somehow, after 11 plus years, they have Christopher Dorner's gun and then they're part of an underground organization that is allowing, that is targeting the riches of the rich people in California. What migrant has this information and this power and this connection to law enforcement to get something that would be, if y'all don't know, where, where would that go, guys? Come on, y'all. Let's go, guys. If Christopher Dorner, he, let's say that he, all of his guns, and, and by the way, the gun that they found is nice and polished, it's nice and clean. You can clean a gun, but if a gun survives from all type of hardship made out of, with that heart, you're going to see some marks. That gun look very nice and clean. Interesting. So how would something that would be a great gun like that, that survived this fire, went into police evidence, now is in the hands of a local underground organization in California of men with Latin descent who are going around targeting the rich and wealthy in California? Woo! Content Cardi TV, as the first thing I said, dirty cop, we have to talk about it, yes! Yes, 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 yes. Deeper conspiracy here. They were hired mercenaries that kept the guns. Now we talking. What y'all know about the executioners? What we know about the, let me, the executioners are the biggest one. There's multiple gangs. They said there's more than, there's clearly more than five. There were, they said more than 16, like about 10 years ago. Now they report that there's at least more than five that still exist in LAPD, at least, that we know of. The executioners were known as the biggest LAPD gang. They had the tattoos. So if you had a tattoo, you're no longer there. But what about the people who didn't have tattoos? So you, we, we thinking that this thing is gone? Let's talk about why we're talking about dirty cops right now. Christopher Dorner now. We need to know his story. This is not that deep. Christopher Dorner, he worked for the Navy. He worked in the Navy. Then he stopped and he went to be reserve or whatever. He, As a reservist in the Navy, he just goes once a month, if y'all don't know, for one week in a month. Then he started working in the LAPD. He went to college, by the way. So he's in the Navy as an officer. So this is a college. No, you need to get his full story. Christopher Dorner started out living in California and he was in an area 
Let me get that right. He was living in a suburban area. Let me not say it might not have been in California to start with.